Here's a man who, mid-2022, Jared, he's saying creative jobs are safe. Right? He's saying the creative, the, the, the creative industry will still be required to produce the work that, the, that AI can, you know, can then take on. This guy had uh, an AI copywriter mid-2022, which I think is super exciting. Uh, we, we also have uh, um, an AI analytics, data science analytics uh, um, in our business. Um, so, so, so I love that. So what, what's your guy's name called and, what, and how do you use Mr. AI in your shop? I mean, that was a while ago, like several generations 2022. of technology. <laughs> so I even, I, it's probably not a very interesting story anymore. Look, I think, I think just to comment on everything that's been said, I think, I think we're being slightly delusional because if you look at the stated goal of OpenAI, it is to invent artificial general intelligence. Artificial general intelligence is a replacement. The, the intention is to create a full replacement for the human brain. Now, estimates vary. Might take a decade, might take two decades, but it also might take two years. And this notion that we are somehow protected by some magic, little magic spark inside people that can't be replicated by a machine I think is fundamentally delusional. I think that it's a misunderstanding of how the human brain works. I think it's a misunderstanding of what creativity actually is. So this notion that humans will always be necessary and humans will always be a key part, I think that is fundamentally wrong. And I can prove that to you because five years ago, if I'd said, I need a photograph of the Empire State Building in New York, and I'd said to you, a computer can generate a photorealistic image of that with any text description, you would have told me that was impossible. There's no way mm. that a machine can do that. Machine learning and, and has been around for 50 years, and for almost the entirety of that 50 years, it was impossible to do what we can do with it today. Yeah. So from my point of view, I think that we are living in a kind of honeymoon phase where... The AI is just, um, just poor enough that it needs <laughs> us to help it to do what it's doing. Yeah. The notion that, 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 for example, it needs to consume human-generated content, it's already consumed all of the human-generated content on the planet. It's gone. That, that battle's lost. It's consumed it. It's read every book. It's looked at every visual image. It's already in the system. So yes, there's some tidying up to be done if the, if the tech companies lose some of these lawsuits. And by the way, this is not solved. There are lawsuits ongoing. So the, no, no lawsuits have found yet that any copyright was, was, breached was breached in the consumption of the stuff. But even if it does turn out that Google gets sued uh, or OpenAI gets sued and has to pay a settlement against to some of the copyright holders, it's actually relevant because it's in the system already. The question is now, can it take what it's learned and produce something that's good enough that it can actually stand head to head with what humans can do? And right now, it can't. But I'm, my point of view is that that is a matter of time. It is not a matter of principle. There's nothing about the trajectory of where these systems are going that convinces me that there's much of a place for a human being in the content generation world in one or two decades, maximum. Hayden, what if do I you can, think? Oh. Can I go for it? No, oh. I, I found, you know, what both of you gentlemen said, you know, very, very interesting. And I think it is really, really important. I mean, the two things that I mentioned that were, were quite key for me um, is talking about the importance of the human element of this technology. And the second thing was around brand safety. Because we're at that, I mean, I think we're probably already past that point where, you know, everyone gets hyped about AI and then, you know, a lot of people run off and start using it without thinking. Um, but I think, you know, the, the points that you're making around the danger of, of AI and what it's capable of and the replacement of that human creative yeah. element, et cetera, is, 
you know, there is an element of that. And I think, you know, over December, after Joe Rogan interviewed the two gentlemen who did the social dilemma, please forgive me, I'm terrible with names and I have forgotten their names. <laughs> but, you know, you know, he kind of did it and then, you know, they, I then started looking into the talks that they've given a couple of months ago and I found it deeply interesting in terms, and quite scary, very, very scary. And, you know, and, and I would highly, you know, recommend that, that everybody educates themselves in terms of the danger of AI um, around what could be possible be before you even go into it and you, and you delve into it. Um, and yet also the legal elements of it have also interested me as not just because I come from a family of lawyers, you know, I, it's, it's critically important. And I think from a brand safety point of view, um, you also need to make sure that you're working with agencies that are very responsible. And the only reason a campaign like ours was possible is because our agency, as part of a global group, had created a secure garden within which the creatives can play and that we know that our brand is safe and that we know, you know that the necessary due diligence is done mm -hmm. around what is created there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so those are absolutely both critically important elements of what we do with any new technology is to use it responsibly to make sure that we're looking at all of the, the necessary elements. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, for us as a brand, and I, and I suppose clients are always going to, to claim this, is you know, human centricity is really important. You know, and we have to walk forward consciously mm. and really educate ourselves in terms of both the dangers and the opportunities as we take every next but, step. But the problem is we're not walking forward consciously. So the thing is, what, what I struggle with in these debates is actually the right move for the human race is to sign an international treaty mm -hmm. to govern how these technologies are developed and how these technologies are used. Because mm -hmm. it is as dangerous, probably, as a nuclear bomb was when the new international nuclear treaties were signed. The problem is we're not doing that. Yeah. The tech companies have, are out of the gate and 500 miles down the road. So to, to suddenly wake up as, as, as governments across the world are doing and go, hmm, I think there might be a problem here. <laughs> it's a little bit late to do that. Which, it's which is the reality. It's going to be very hard to rein this stuff back in. And I think, I think the point is that the problem is that the, the dilemma we face now is we have the magic tools, but actually the gene is out of the bottle. Correct. And, and it's not obvious to me how, as a species, we're going to rein it back in again. And, and, and I think you're absolutely, the gene is definitely out of the bottle, right? And which is what you spoke to, Stephen, as well, you know, to go, I it's, think it's we're already going to, out there, how do, how do we rein it in? We're going to need AI to, to. to rein AI in. <laughs> yeah. um, I, 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 I right. agree with what you say, Jared, and, and, and it is scary. Um, you know, some of the, some of the risks that, that, that AI pose beyond uh, what we've mentioned for content creation is, you know, cyber criminals are, rel are relying on AI Absolutely. Uh, to, you know, w with today they've got much better data processing capabilities of their own. Uh, they can use f uh, deep fakes of people's mm. faces, their voices mm. to uh, uh, bypass biometric uh, uh, data, uh, etc. So. Um, it's, it's actually a, a global discussion to be had, but on, on the intellectual property and the content creation side, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if we don't look after our human creators, um, uh, that's who we should be looking after and make sure that, we, that there's a responsible usage of AI. The, the EU um, AI Act is therefore probably a step in the right direction. It's just a first sort of um, a first uh, kickoff, but it is, a, it is a comprehensive response. Um, and uh, if you look at what happened in, just a quick example of where AI actually saved the day after new technology disrupted a market, the music industry, uh, you had CDs in the 90s, all of a sudden you had um, uh, MP3 mm -hmm. uh, file compression, and then a computer scientist there in America, a student, uh, came up with the Napster website and enabled people to uh, share, make their music libraries available, and people were just copying music and pasting from each other libraries. Uh, Mass-scale piracy and uh, copyright infringement. By uh, uh, a global record sales drop by 50% between uh, 2000 and 2010, and uh, by tw 2008, I think, uh, uh, IFB, the International Phonographic Asso uh, Indus uh, Association, uh, estimated that 95% of music people listen to are, uh, mm. are pirated. Spotify uh, was an, an early adopter of AI, 
um, and actually maybe the first after Apple released uh, music but you could buy sort of select your hits but Spotify came out and, and said hang on let's learn from the mistakes that happened before there's a market people actually want 24-7 uh, access to full music catalogs let's give it to them but we license it from the content owners and we get a, a license fee payments and we distribute it to the rights holders. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, what saved the day for mm -hmm. the, the music industry was actually adaptive AI. And um, so in this instance, if you think what can be done to rein things in, AI could be de deployed and yeah, Opwell and his team will have to get creative. Maybe they're already working on it to maybe recognize in data sets. Uh, so if you've got generative AI producing new outputs, to actually uh, uh, detect uh, through metadata what uh, whether, let's say, a certain writer's use or a certain mu uh, a musician or content creator's works were actually used in that generated output. Don't know if that would be possible. But if so, you said we don't know what's going to be possible in a few years, so maybe. And then to, to uh, monetize that and to, to make sure some remuneration flows back to the content creators yeah. on whose works yeah. the new output was, was based. And maybe even some, uh, let's call it attribution. So if you were to create a campaign and, and it, it's AI and it was, there were some significant uh, people's works that it was contributed from, they will benefit from being mentioned as, as, as uh, uh, AI-inspired uh, mm. pre-creators. Mm. So, so that's one example, but um, uh, the, what, what Spotify uh, taught us is that by using adaptive AI in a way, that saved the music industry yeah. of the disruptive technology, almost ruined it. And, a, and an industry that all of us love. I mean, come on, the mm -hmm. mu music mm -hmm. is, is part of us. But I think in our, in, in our industry, uh, adoption is very slow. So Hayden, you and then Art, well, I'd like you to weigh in yeah. on what you've been just said, being yeah. at Google, right? Yeah. So I, mean, I, I, just, I think we've got a problem that's so near to us. I mean, I, I agree with all these things. One day, hopefully something will fix it and regulate. But we, we are sitting now, the bulk of our industry, I mean, yeah, we're all sitting in this industry, right? We're deciding here, if you listen to Altman, he say, what, 95% of the industry will be automated, Gartner saying 30%. Yeah. It's probably going to sit somewhere in the middle, right? Mm. The industry is going to be cut in half yeah. within the next year to two years. Tomorrow morning, we are pitching to a global client in Singapore who asked us if we open to a bot. I was like, of course we can build you a chatbot. They said, no, 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 build, operate, transfer. So I was like, oh, so what? So you build it, you, build it. you, you give us the tools, we operate it, and within three years, you give it to us. I'm saying, so I must give it sure. to you, and just, I'm out of business in three years. And then we do that 10, 20, 30 times, and this is wow. a global client that's sitting there. So we kind of going, okay, where is that level tomorrow morning going to go? You know, we, exactly. it, the impact is right here in our industry, and, and that's, I mean, I... I I partially agree with you, Jared. It is the party line at the moment, you know. Uh, David Droga is walking around saying, we've got to double down on creativity because that's where it is. We don't know how far it will go, but there will probably be a cluster of people. But as an industry, we are facing an existential crisis. Like literally sure. right now, there's not a single pitch brief coming out at the moment that the client doesn't ask how can you give this to me? Why? Because the tools are going to get democratized. Yeah. The clients are going to yeah. come out of marketeers, are going to come out of, out of marketing classes, and the, the line between advertising and marketing is going to completely evaporate. Because exactly. mm -hmm. now your marketer can put in a brief and it's generating the content in real time. Exactly. Right? So then you go, okay, maybe, our two, maybe it's a good thing for marketing and advertising to come back together mm. again. So, you know, we're facing real threats, and of course they are the big, big ones where it will take over the world, but as an industry, I think we really need to think hard about, never mind commercial models yeah. and, you know, talking right. about gain share and all these right. things. The retainer model is dead because it's based on hours, it's yeah. based on people. Yeah, yeah. We sell a long tail of people. That clients joke when we pull the bus in. Why? Because I must put 100 people on the retainer yeah. to make money. This thing is built for the exact opposite. We're going to do double with half the people. Yeah, that's, that is exactly right. And I think, you know, the way I've been explaining this to people is if you take a film, let's imagine a movie. The person who, if, if everyone says, well, it's okay, you'll always need humans for creativity. I'll say, okay, so the director has a job. But every other job, every other job, the cameraman, the person building the sets, the special effects creator, the sound engineer, every other job is gone. 
And that is actually the scale of the calamity that faces mm. this industry because it isn't comforting to say, well, your chief creative officer and your executive creative director have a job. That's the 5% Great. that you make. That's not where we make money in an agency. We mm -hmm. make money in an agency by producing tons of collateral and yeah. downs of ads and, yeah. you know. With so I, I agree completely with what Hayden's saying. I don't think this industry is grappling enough, even nearly enough, with the scale of impact that this stuff's going to have. Mm -hmm. The clients are starting to move faster than we are in seeing those cost advantages. And, and the big tech players that are building marketing automation systems that are selling those systems to clients are selling them the means of our destruction, essentially. Yeah. Because they're selling them the tools that they can use to make us irrelevant. And I'm not sure what we can do about it because at the end of the day w w it's not about the ACA forming a committee that goes we don't, it's like what the Hollywood actors just did and mm. went on strike against mm. AI in Hollywood it's kind of comical you, you can't strike against the progress <laughs> of technology <laughs> you know it's so yeah no it's amazing and even like influences and all these things I mean they're uh, right now, I just saw a recent example where they just got permission from an actor to generate them and use them as an influence. So we don't even need to yeah. shoot, to cast, to be in. It's a signature and a bit of money. Now, the question is, how, how do you become an influencer, you know, as a human being when you're competing against these digital virtual influencers? But brands are sponsoring virtual, these virtual influences, influences yes. because people are believing them to be real. And exactly. uh, the tide is is moving so I, I guess it's probably thinking about those new commercial models already and mm. and where we are as an yeah. industry that mm -hmm. needs to happen and mm. i think That's you know going deep. back to what steven says i can't i mean we really need to look at those yes it's going faster and i absolutely i agree that there is a threat 100 percent. i'm not disagreeing with what i'm saying is the creativity comes in where do we go from there you can't stop it so so the creativity comes in the solution and what the future looks like and how do we apply technology in a way that changes the jobs. Yes, those particular roles might change, but what does the next thing look like? And that's where the creative has to come in. The, the, thing, the thing that is different about AI as a technological advance compared to any other technology in history is that AI is trying to replace our brains and not our hands. Yeah. And that is what is fundamentally different about artificial intelligence. That's why I don't believe that, you know, because people keep saying, yeah, in the Industrial Revolution, everyone said machines were going to take away all of our jobs. And look, we created even more jobs. The problem is the machines replaced our hands. So yeah. they let us do way more things. But our brains were safe. And our brains as a species are the most valuable parts of our bodies. And very so, much having replaced so that now. I, I worry that there are no replacement jobs. What does a replacement job look like in a world where your competitor is exponentially smarter than you are, faster than you are, and more capable than you are? I hear you. I'm just more optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're on the 30% side. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm willing to be optimistic. optimistic. And Taran, just I think, tell me I how. think rightly so. Look, but I think even, even if that does happen, we're still left. Let's say it's 20, 30, 40%, right, of yeah. people, the directors yeah. and the ECDs and the planners, because they're saying, right, you can now have more time to think. I'm task based uh, uh, output, no, right? Not everybody. Not everybody, we know this. Look at that agency, just go look at that retainer list. Look at how many thinkers are there. If there's more than 20% on that retainer thinking, it's a lot, okay? The yeah. rest are doing, they're doing timesheets and call reports and all sorts of amazing things, yep. production schedules. When all of that disappears, you're left with the 20, 30%. We don't, you, you cannot, you're gonna Indeed. go to a boutique. Yeah. Ideas companies. Exactly. Mm. Right? Uh, no, for real, I really believe ideas come from the future. that can make a billion dollar Hollywood film. <laughs> and, and will be very wealthy but very small. Yeah. And Jared, if you're saying, you know, what is the solution? Obviously, I can't give you the solution. That takes a culmination of a lot of minds. And you're talking about a global treaty. I can't deliver a global treaty. <laughs> what? what I can do. That's not what I'm sorry. Way. I know that's what I was invited here for, but I, it's just not going to happen tonight. Um, but I think, you know, what's critically important is voices like all these different voices to keep saying, guys, are you seeing the danger? 
you know, and then other people saying, okay, are well, these enough? are the important legal aspects of it, and these are the important societal aspects of I it. I think and that's right. We'll move forward together as a collection yeah. of, of experts, and the mere fact that we're having this dialogue this evening is a step in the right direction. You know, I think that's right, because the bulk of dialogue about AI, if you read up in the media and you listen to podcasts, it's all hyped. Mm. Posit it's, Absolutely. it's the hype of the promise of the it's technology. The and I just think as we have not analyzed carefully enough the impact this, I mean, there's, there's thoughts that we need to create a universal basic income. Mm, Sam Altman's right? calling for it, yeah. Yeah. So that makes perfect sense to say it could be liberating, but it's not going to be liberating if 80% of people end up with no income. Is mm. that like a Sasa card that we have here? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. A, bit bigger. a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, think, think, I, think, yeah. I think the important thing here, sorry, uh, to, uh, to cut you off, I, I will give you an opportunity to speak here. I think the important um, thing here is that, the, it's, it's what I was saying earlier, the industry is not adopting fast enough. We, we, the, the industry is still sitting and, and, and producing the same way and thinking the same way and, and you know, putting out financial models that look the same. So we as an industry are not uh, um, adopting fast enough. And, and, and clients, uh, incidentally, within, with, with, within the, the organizational space are moving faster, but not in the marketing realm. It's very few clients who on the marketing side are also moving as fast. So well, I think context, as an industry, yeah, marketing industry in its entirety, we're actually moving a lot slower than we should be. The content, but it's being driven by the desire to save money and get faster and get more accurate and more personalized. So mm. the need is not the one for the existence of our industry. Mm. It's, yes. the, it's the need for, for their desire. But by virtue of that, I mean, Gen, Gen Studio from Adobe is going to be launched next month, yeah. right? The thing is complete so self-service. Right. It really plugs into everything. It's learned from every piece of Photoshop ever made. Like, how do you compete with that, right? Yeah. And it's going to go look at the video on the site. Marketers, blah, yeah. blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? It's not agencies. And, and, it's, and, and I don't think the future marketer is going to be the same version of the current market. They say 70% by 2025 will shift from operational duties to strategic duties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when you look at a marketing department and you look through there, how often have you got brand managers who are agency chasers? Yeah, right? So you get the same yeah. problem we have in the agency. There are too few people thinking and too many people doing. Correct. It's going to be the same. So there's probably going to have to be something coming. But we're being disintermediated by the tech players and the big ones we're standing next to. Right? So we do have to work together, which is what we are trying mm. to do, so we can find a joint solution because we both coexist in this ecosystem. Just um, remember that uh, we still have a few advantages over AI, okay? Like I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> for now. For I, now. I love it. Some, somebody who's trying to give hear, us some I hope. I know what Jared is saying, but, but I, think, I think that we can agree that as, it, as things currently stand, so yes, AI might develop to a point where it can mimic a human brain, but guess what? It's mimicking a, a human brain at that particular point in time. The human experience will keep evolving. And with that, that's what I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, the, the weakness of the machine is that it can only uh, be trained on the data that it's, that it's fed. And, and if you stop feeding it data or quality data, the output is going to suffer. So um, also, human beings might very well come back into fashion sometime soon. You know, if, if, you, if you consider the brand, the, the virtual brand ambassadors, that's like a fad, right? There's a lot of fads out there. I don't know if you remember this thing uh, called an NFT or a non-fungible yeah. token. Yeah. <laughs> it, everyone was up in arms about that. Then you had the, the metaverse where all the brands rushed to register their trademarks in the metaverse because we're going to start like selling and buying, um, you know, Burger King in a virtual space. Uh, and, and, and all of that sort of got... Uh, sort of morphed in, into the background. People were paying for these NFTs and they didn't realize like hundreds of millions of dollars for like a, a, a once in a lifetime pa a, a painting done by an artist, but they didn't realize they're not even buying the copyright and the content. They're just buying the actual source code, unique identifier mm. of this thing. So 
um, there's going to be a lot of fads that will that will just also dissipate, and and it is interesting. Like the, in the in the K-pop space, you know, Korean pop. There's there's a virtual band with uh, a red the other day. It's got 25 million followers. So active engagement by people. People are actually finding it interesting to engage with with uh, uh, these virtual entities that that have personalities. It's something fun, but it's not necessarily something with uh, with with, with determinable lasting, uh, lasting longevity. Uh, lasting. Have to be yeah. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, Jared, let me, I just want to give no, a moment sure. to, to I've been trying to get in on this one. <laughs> 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 so, um, right now, as we're speaking, there's uh, something called Google I.O. that's happening right now, mm -hmm. right? Where they're announcing um, the latest innovations within Google. Ye yesterday, it was ChatGPT. It was OpenAI. Oh, and they, OpenAI, yeah. they had their versions. Um, and between the space and time between the last Google I.O. and now, like what happened last year seems ancient. It's borderline mm. laughable, right? It's so old. But what's going to happen in the next two weeks, three weeks is unimaginable. And I, 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 I can be honest with you, no tech company can actually tell you where it's going because I, mean, I think everybody's trying to figure it out right now. The reality is that industries are going to be changed. We'd have to be blind to not see that. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he speaks correctly. And the industries that are going to be affected are the ones that are, that, that are based, people who are, have got like one sort of set of skills and where time is involved. And creative, unfortunately, falls in the space of I charge you for my craft and the amount of time that takes. Whereas AI comes in, and does that in a small amount of time. Now, an interesting thought I heard of, I, I, I don't know, uh, you know uh, an interesting thought that I heard of from a podcast was from an, uh, an artist who was grappling with his reality, and he was saying, um, um, you know, he obviously needs to shift his brand and his approach. And he was saying that he believes that in the future, there's going to be a new sort of like proof economy where um, creatives... Creative is going to be so easy to create that um, if you had to create something beautiful, you almost have to prove it, right? So you would need to have rough drafts, <laughs> the initial artwork, the initial whatever, to prove it. And, and he, he assumes that there's going to be true value in showing true craft. Because, I mean, you can go onto your phone right now, go onto Canva and design yeah. you know, uh, something super quickly. So we don't know where that will go. Um, you know, obviously it will not be to the same scale as AI, right? But I do believe that for us who are in the creative industry, we need to start thinking now about what we look like in the future. I've, I've heard of a, there's a campaign that went live where, I'm not going to mention the brand, insurance company used AI images and social media threw a little bit of a fit and it was mostly designers. Where I'm concerned is... Um, you know, obviously there's the concern for, you know, using that and it looks like, you know, you're not, you're not supporting the community. Where I'm concerned is, what are you doing, you know, to make sure that, you know, you are preparing for, for, yeah. for what can happen?